get the largest one. We'll start out on our backs, like always, unless you'd rather start some other place. I've had a lot of people starting in meditation lately, um, a lot of my private clients too, just wanting to just kind of close their eyes and regroup. So if you've been kind of chaotic this morning around the house, uh, feel free to go on and just come to a seat and close your eyes. Otherwise, on your back and take your legs in any way that it's going to make you happy. Those knees could be bent, those legs could be straight, whatever works best for you. And then I'll say palms up just to receive a little positive space, unless your morning's been super chaotic already, hopefully not. And palms are down and you just ground into your space. So we'll focus today on our breath to get us started. Got a little, just a thought that um, I really like is we're all stuck in this isolation mode right now where, um, you know, everybody's in the house. We're all back together again. My oldest son has his girlfriend here. So she's been here three weeks yesterday, um, which has been very interesting. I mean, we're getting along beautifully, but it's, you know, it's very different. So I came across this, it's small ways to support relationships in isolation. Maybe one of these will speak with you. The first is to express your gratitude daily and to thank those around you, very yogic. The second, focus on repairing and resolving conflicts early on. I like that one in particular. If you have someone, maybe a child, one of them you tend to kind of spar with, shall we say, more than the others, maybe try and a little extra diffuse the situation and talk through it more than you might normally. The third, acknowledge others' bids for attention. This is a great one, especially when kids are small. Attempts at connection. Arrange time to connect without distractions, such as removing social media, your work, turning the TVs off, hopefully having more time at the dinner table, and then not being in a hurry to get up from the table. Like go on and leave the dirty dishes right there and just continue the conversation. Five, replace assumptions with curiosity. I like that one a lot. Replace assumptions with curiosity. Find the question instead. So you maybe are assuming something about someone, but instead of assuming it, just try and ask a question. And lastly, keep communicating. Try to be as clear as possible and use I statements. So instead of communicating and saying, you do this and you do this and you, 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 change it around to I, how can I help you? How am I, you know, how can I better understand what you're trying to tell me or something like that. I think if we can target these six small ways to help make our relationships a little stronger during this quarantine, can certainly help make it a little bit easier for all of us. So I welcome you now with that thought to bring one hand to your heart space, one hand to your low belly. Go on and take those feet together, bend your knees, open the knees out wide into angel wings or butterfly wings. And let's start to tap into those hips there. And with your hand on your heart and your hand on your belly, I welcome you to at first right away, let's set an intention for the day. Let's take a big, huge inhale in. And then open the mouth and let it out. And then just feel into that space. I'm gonna take that little moment to see what it is that you might want to reach out towards today. It could also be a prayer. The first thing that comes to you, they say, is the organic one to roll with. You may choose to keep those eyes closed, whatever you like. We'll go a little bit further into the breath. Again, a big deep inhale in through the nostrils. Pause at the top, open the mouth, push it all out, find the pause. One more like that, a big deep inhale in. Pause, open the mouth. Now I welcome you to go a little bit further into the hips, taking your hands, Resting palms facing up on your inner thighs. I'm gonna join you on my mat now where we'll do a little bit more breath work. If it's too much to have both of those uh, feet together and your knees out wide, you could put a block under each, each side like this, just take a little strain off, or you could be knock knee if that bothers your back because it is a little bit of an intense back bend. And now with those palms there, just try to straighten the arms out, flatten the back down. 
We're going to go into that four, two, six, two breath. So we'll breathe in for four, hold for two, exhale for six, and hold for two. Really excellent breath to do at night when you're trying to sleep as well, but trying to help us connect today at this point with our parasympathetic. And get us out of that fight and flight mode. So here we go. Take a big breath in, two, three, four, hold, two, release, two, three, four, five, six, pause, two. Breathe in, two, three, four, hold, release, two, three, four, five, six, pause, breathe in, two, three, four, hold, release, two, three, four, five, six, pause. Now just take a moment to recognize those little subtle changes in the body just through some breath work, a little bit of hip work. And then keeping those legs there, stretch the arms straight up overhead. Now I want you to really stretch the right arm, lift your ribs towards the ceiling. Big inhale in, and then let that right side go, changing to the left. Big inhale, reach, think, lift the left rib cage up. You're in a bigger back bend. And then exhale, let it go. Take the fingertips beneath the knees and draw those knees together. You're going to stretch them out long. We're going to come into banana asana. You'll reach the hands up overhead. To start, you'll take your left foot, if you can, and cross it over your ankle. You don't have to cross them if you don't want to. Now lift the right heel up and move it way to the right. Your butt stays right where it is. Take your right hand, grab hold of the left wrist, kind of sit up a little bit, use a little core, and just wiggle the shoulders to the right. Your midsection, your core stays right where it was, so you're in a big C now. If it's good, turn your head to the left and try and get that left shoulder nice and grounded into the mat. So then breathe into the space that you're slowly creating down the left side of the body. Just starting to move the spine right now and that side body stretch first, a little different. Normally we do our twist first. Just a big inhale in. You can get a little more active if you want. Really pull that left arm over. And then as you exhale, come back to center. Legs come out long. We'll take a full body stretch in the middle first. Inhale, reach away. And then exhale, we'll trade. Right ankle comes over the left. Pick the feet up. Move them to the left. And then again, push your booty down. Draw the belly in. Lift up. Wiggle the shoulders to the left. One side will be a little stickier. And then we have that left hand kind of reaching that right arm over. It's cool in the neck. You turn that head to the right. Now my eyes closed now. You can have your eyes closed or open. And then just recognize which side feels a little bit tighter than the other. Not judging, just kind of letting it be what it is. Big inhale in. Really pull if you're doing it. And then exhale, relax down. Coming out of that, bring those feet back to center. Bring the chest back to center. Walk the feet up towards the glutes. And then draw the knees into the chest. Kick and hold on what I call the mushy section of your kneecaps, just kind of right uh, below the patella. And then draw me some circles. It's like you're going to draw circles on the ceiling with your knees. You kind of pull them in, lift your booty. And then go in both directions. And then we'll work into a really easy twist. A little back release. Hold on to that right shin. Stretch that left leg up to start. Now inhale. Push through that heel. Fire up that calf. Get the leg as straight as you can. And then as you exhale, point. I want you to lower slowly. Really tap into your low back. Draw the belly in. Push your low back down. You're going to lower the leg to just where you start to feel your low back want to come up. So for me, I can get to about here. You might be higher, you might be lower. Take a breath in. And as you exhale, lift the head, neck, and shoulders up. Find your core. 
Squeeze, get a little taller, working a little hip flexor strength on the left, warming the body up. Big inhale. And then as you exhale, let the left foot come down, let the head relax. Left hand to your leg, right on up. Take a big breath in. Come into your nice, easy twist. Let that leg fall over to the left. And again, whew, just going to check out what the body is saying. If you guys are like me, you've been doing some weird stuff around the house in the form of, I don't know, maybe little things outside that you wouldn't normally be doing, little chores. So you're feeling some tight areas and some very strange places. Big inhale in. Exhale it out. And then slowly come back to neutral. Draw the right knee in. Bring the left knee back up into the party. And again, circles. Just see if you can feel a difference from side to side. If you can't, no worries. And then we trade left leg, keep hold, right legs up. So again, if you were like wicked tight in your hamstrings, you might look like this. No judgment whatsoever. I already stretched this morning, so I'm feeling pretty good. Inhale, push the heel, fire up those calves, make it active, take a breath in. And then as you exhale, draw the low belly and point. And again, be really mindful. Slow it down enough to notice where you need to stop. So you want the low back pushed in, core is engaged. This side you might be able to go lower. It depends on your strength and your hip flexor. And then here we go. Inhale, lift, and hold. Now, don't like use your arms to pull you in. Really, you can let go of your arms. This is about the core, but I just kind of have my arms in. Inhale, lift. One more breath. And then as you exhale, release the head, release that right leg. Take a breath, squeeze that knee in and up. A little wind relieving posture to help that back relax. And then come over to the twist. So we've moved our spine down into some side body love, those two ranges of motion, spinal flexion side to side. Now getting us into the twists, and in a moment, we'll find that concave and convex movement. We've already found a little arching. Actually, we've already done that a tiny bit. Couple of breaths, just let this settle. And then slowly grab hold of that puppy, bring that left knee back up, bring that right knee up, and start to rock yourself front to back. Now, I want you to act like a kid here. You can be a little spunky, you don't use your hands, let this be all core. Take big swipes all the way back, all the way up. Really massage out that back. Keep your core engaged. One more. And then slowly lift yourself up. You'll come into what we call an easy seat here just for a moment. Now, there's nothing easy about sitting on the floor. It actually sucks in our hips. So if you were lucky enough to have a yoga block or a book or something, I highly recommend you take it and slide it right underneath your sits bones. So when I say sits bones, that's those two bony things in your butt. And that means the majority of your the block is kind of behind you. So coming into a nice, easy seat, I make it look easy because I've spent hundreds of hours sitting like this in yoga training. Whatever works for you that you can concentrate on a long spine, that's what I want you to take at this moment. Because I know there's a couple names up there that I'm not familiar with in practice. And so again, thanks for joining us. So taking a big inhale here. Just a little bit of work in the neck. Drop the chin to the chest. This is our familiar pattern, right? Nothing fancy here. Keep the chin down. Take another inhale. And then exhale. Drop the chin down a little more. But if you've got a tight upper back and tight shoulders, frequently it's your neck. Now inhale. Bring it to neutral. We're going to add a teeny bit to that. Take your hands. You're going to interlace. Bring them behind your head. Squeeze forward. Now I don't want you to pull anything. Take a breath, tuck the chin and round, draw the belly in and get back like into a tiny ball. Big inhale. And then exhale, we open up. Perfect. If you have a thyroid issue, we're going to go backwards. Might make you feel kind of funky. I don't have a thyroid issue, but I like to do this anyway. 
and just massage. You can just tilt the head back or we add the fingers. You'll take your thumbs to your collarbones, fingers start down low, it's hard for me to talk, and as we go back, you'll massage up to the cushy section right below the jawbone. So here we go, nice neutral chin, big inhale up. Hold a little bit of pressure up underneath that jaw of mine. Ooh, got a little bit of a swollen gland. Happy allergy season. Take a breath in. Push back a little more. One more breath. And then we bring the head to neutral. Focusing on the other side, but we're going to add a little shoulder love in while we're here. But first, look down at your legs, which if you have them crossed like me, then you have a natural side. So for me, that's left foot in, right foot back. We're going to trade it. So just trade it. Suddenly, not as comfortable, but that's okay. Take your hands, bring them behind you. If you can, I want you to make a fist with them like this. If you have shorter arms, you may need to look like this, or if you are wicked tight in those shoulders. You may not be able to get them behind your back into this fist, and that's okay. Now draw the shoulders back. You're going to lift the collarbones. Now I want you to pull the ears back. You're going to feel like you're making a double chin. Take a breath in. Pull. Oh, my goodness. Those shoulders way back. I can feel what I did yesterday here. Take a breath in. And then bring those fists over to the right hip. Tuck that right chicken wing back. Make sure your shoulders are level if you can, and then take a breath in, and then drop that ear to the right. Now, again, we want, I was already sticking my chin forward in that familiar pattern. Check yourself, pull the ear back. Now, maybe you tuck the chin, maybe you lift the chin, whatever it is, just again, stretching through those shoulders, working through the neck connection with the shoulders, big inhale in, exhale, and then we come to neutral, bring those hands way back, draw the ears back like you're making that double chin, big breath, reach, and then we come over to the left. So again, naturally what happens is my left shoulder that's attached to the chicken wing out jacks up. So I'm going to balance my shoulders out. I'm going to pull that left one back. One side, you'll be able to get that fist work a little bit of, you know, closer to the hip, and then try and get those shoulders balanced. Taking a breath, keep the ears pulled back, stack your shoulders. And then drop that left ear towards the left shoulder. I just notice which side's talking. Closing the eyes helps us just remove that visual stimulation and allows us to really listen to what's going on in the body. Take another breath. If you need to tuck the chin, maybe tuck. If you need to lift it, lift. We're getting ready to warm up with a little bit of movement and then hit those deep stretches. Big inhale in. Exhale, and then let it go. Take a breath in, take those shoulders back and forth. One more shoulder stretch. This is one we all know, we've all done this. I'm gonna uh, change my legs up. I'm gonna take my legs straight out in front. Now I'm still sitting on the block, so my legs are able to come forward. If this is uncomfortable, you could bend totally like this, but whatever it is, just commit to it, be cool with it. Take those hands out, you're gonna turn the right palm forward, bring it down and around over to the left. Now what happens is typically our shoulders jack up, they turn into kind of earrings. Tuck them down, get this left hand under and above the elbow, palm faces your face. Now pull the right shoulder down. So this is a stretch we've all been doing our entire lives, nothing fancy, but we're gonna make it a little bit um, spunkier, shall we say. I want you to make it active. So the way we make it active is I'm going to take this right, this extended arm, and I'm going to pull it forward like I'm trying to get it to my computer screen. And then I'm going to take this left hand, I'm going to pull that palm towards my face. I'm going to pull that right shoulder down, and I'm going to go, oh yeah, I feel a little extra love here. So again, big inhale, and exhale. So again, it's a little bit of a fight going on. My right arm's trying to pull away. Left arm's pulling it back, just makes it active, asking that shoulder to work a little bit while we stretch it. One more breath. And then release that side. Little shoulder roll, whichever direction your body tells you to go, or both, like me. And then we'll take it on the other side. Left palm comes out, stretch it across the body. Right arm up and under. It's hard to get it above the elbow. 
especially if uh, I got a lot of big muscly guys, right? And uh, if that's you, hey, no judgment, be stoked you're that muscly. We got this palm right in front of our face, this palm's facing back, drop those shoulders even, try and really pull that left one down, and then make it active, take that extended arm forward, but squeeze the crud out of this top hand, it's like you're trying to, trying to smack yourself right in the face. So big inhale and exhales. Again, keep it active. We want to keep those shoulders strong, especially right now. All this time that we are spending virtually, our shoulders are weakening all that space behind our scapula and our neck, back of the neck. We want that stuff to fire up. So we're asking it to fire here while we're stretching the crud out of it. One more time. Big inhale, make it active. Squeeze back on that exhale. Ooh, I feel that. And then let it go. A couple shoulder rolls. That was fun. Let's get moving. Take that block out from behind. Place it wherever it makes you happy. Come into your tabletop. Tuck your toes under. You know I like to work our feet if you're used to me. Fingers are facing forward at the moment. Now drop the belly, heads up, tail is up. I have really limited range of motion here. I never really realized it until I watched one of my videos recently. And then round your belly, tuck the chin, and then again, cow, this bothers your back, don't do it. Just hold neutral or hold that cat. And then into that cat. And then slowly walk your hands forward a pace. Lower your elbows straight down to the ground. Take that right leg straight behind you. And then I want you to push into your form. So if you notice my momentum's going back, you need to use your core. Pull the core in and up. I just barely want you to lift that left knee. Push the crap out of that right calf and Achilles. Now, you might be like, girl, we just did the shoulders, and now you're asking me to use them. You are 100% correct. Strengthen those shoulders. If they're always tight, they might be weak. Take a breath in. Really reach back. Push up out of the floor. Belly strong in. And then exhale. Release that left leg. Bring the right knee underneath. Come up and come out of that. Now, turn your fingertips backwards towards your knees. So I'm going to show you this just because some people do it the opposite way. You're not turning them in to get them backwards, not internal. External rotation. So pinkies are in, thumbs are out. And if you're like, why is she telling us that? I have college kids that can do both. So take that movement. Now really maybe even reach away in that scared cat. Lift it up. Whatever feels good. Just get that stretch through the forearms and through that back. And then come to a trail. Turn those fingers around. Walk them forward a pace. And if you can, we're going to do it in that controlled manner. You're going to take like the eyes of your elbows, pull them in so there's internal rotation. It's like you've got a strap wrapped around your arms. And these are little push-ups, but we're just going to lower. Controlled. You, you know, don't feel like you should be able to do that. And then we take the left foot straight out. Fall the foot is down. Now I'm going to ask you to push into the ground. So utilize the top of the shoulders. Utilize those muscles in your upper back. Engage your belly and lift and push into that left calf. So the right knee is up. Now if you're like, girl, I can't do that, no worries, put your knee down, just push into that left calf. But just really, if you're with me, think it's like you were gonna float right up into a forearm stand. Utilize those same muscles. Your gaze is just right down at the floor beneath the face. Take a breath. Push into that left calf one more time. And then slowly lower it down. Bring that left knee down. Come up and come out of that. And then take some just, you know, movement of any kind. Make it funky. We call it Anahata Kriya. It's one of my favorite uh, Sanskrit terms. And then we're going to go right into the hamstrings. Tuck those toes under. Engage your belly. Lift your knees up. And walk your hands back to meet your feet. You'll have your feet hips distance apart. Now, like, seriously, check. In the studio, everybody thinks we have, they have, like, linebacker hips, or else they have their feet totally together. Check them. Kind of feel your hips and bring them straight down. Bend the knees enough that your ribs connect to those thighs. 
and then let everything hang. Now, when I say bend the knees, I really mean bend the knees. Connect your ribs, so it's not just about the back right now. Let the head hang, we shake it yes and no. Now, let's get a little spunkier. Bring those hands to the shins. Keep those knees bent. Push into your big toes, so like squeeze them down onto the ground. Lift into that halfway lift and lengthen. Squeeze your butt. Big inhale. Now lengthen the spine, shift the weight forward, draw your belly in. Squeeze your butt. You'll start to feel your hamstrings, hopefully, maybe. Again, inhale, start to push against your shins. Crown of the head's forward. It's like I got your ears. Shift, draw the belly in. Squeeze your butt, and as you exhale, come up to stand. And feel that space that you created right around what I call your butt smile. And then take a big inhale, reach the hands up. Left hand grabs right wrist, come up, and then over to the left. Now we're going to kind of play with this space for a moment, working into the back and the hip. Come up to center. We'll tray. Right, uh, right hand grabs left wrist. Take a breath. Squeeze those knees together, especially if you look at me, I'm bow-legged. Squeeze them together, take it to the right. Bow-legged, what does bow-legged mean? It typically means we're fast runners, but it's hard on the feet. Take a breath in. And then come up. Now we're going to trade. So we're going to work a little bit of motion just with these knees. A little track into the back and start to get into the hips. I'm going to take a layer off. It was chilly in my house this morning with this change of weather. Okay, take a breath. Left hand grabs right wrist. Again, just what we did before. Take a breath in, squeeze those legs. To, oh, excuse me, right grabs left. We're going to our right. Come over. Now look down, it's like at your armpit, right at your foot. Drop that left knee down and pull that left shoulder forward. Take a breath in. And then inhale, come up, straighten the leg, bend the right knee, and pull the left shoulder back. Squeeze your left glute, pull the hips forward. And then come up and come out of that. Let the hands come down, give your shoulders a little up. And then we come back up, left side, grab to right. Again, squeeze those knees together. Take a breath, arch it over, and then bend that left knee. Look down under your armpit at your pinky toe. Really squeeze that right glute. Get deep into that hip flexor as well as the side belly. And then inhale up. And we're going to kind of trade. Bend the right knee. Roll it back. Squeeze the left glute. Shift that hip forward. And then inhale up. Exhale, let that go. Here we go. A couple half Sundays to get us warmed up before we go super big into our hips. Take a big inhale, reach up. As you exhale, bend your knees, forward fold. Inhale, fingers to shins, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, huge breath all the way up. I've got my palms together, it just feels the best. A little back and squeeze the glutes. And then exhale, prayer, come to pause. Inhale, reach. Exhale, forward fold. bend the knees, right? This isn't about the hamstrings. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Step that right foot back. Let's come into our first runner's lunge. Now, if runner's lunge is killing you already, a block underneath each side, you can look like this. One under each hand or something. Laundry detergent, awesome spot to be. But hold here. Just take a moment to let those hips sink. Check your alignment. Left knee, left ankle. And the ball is back foot. Check, check, check. If your foot's way back here, grab that thing and get forward. Take a breath in. Let's twist. Right hand stays grounded. You can on fingers flat. You can hover. Whatever you want today. It's up to you. Reach that left hand up. Find the big extension through the spine. Big breath in. And then exhale, bring that hand down. My hip is already talking to me on the left. We're going to take this back foot parallel. I'm going to go into extended side angle. Your left 
elbow will be on your knee, this back foot's parallel. To start, side angle. Perfect place to be. If this is killing you, you stay here. Little log with this left elbow, track your knee to the left. You want to work this inner thigh. And if it's there, reach the fingertips. Now really reach, so it's like you were reaching for something that you need to really grab and then push through the blade of that back foot. Now think, shift hips forward, squeeze your butt. A little love session here. Again, big inhale, working through the outer and inner. One more breath. And then exhale, bring your hand down to the ground. It's like a little slow vinyasa flow here before we hit some big old stretches. I'm into skandasana. Ooh, skandasana is talking to mama today. Right knee is going to bend. Your foot's at 45 degrees. Left toes are straight up. Now, if this bothers your knees, work your working strength. Up here is a great place to be. I'm normally working strength, but I'm really tight today. I swear I've been really tight every day because I've been doing weird exercise. Hold. Make it active. Look at that left heel. Pull that in. Say hello a little deeper. Now we're going to get it even spunkier. Left hand straight under the shoulder. Reach that right hand up. Big inhale in. Big exhale out. Slowly lower that hand down. Come up right into the middle. You're going to pivot those heels in and lift yourself up into this little squat here. Now kind of shift around. You've got your booty sitting at the back like you're going to twerk. Fingers are in, thumbs are back, elbows are up. Draw back. Now, literally draw back. Pull this crap and draw it back. Yeah, not as fun. A couple of breaths. So grab your leg squishy and pull it and roll it back. Take a breath in. Drop that left shoulder toward the right. Pull the legs apart like you're opening up a clamshell. And if you need movement, you're that kid, right? Take some movement. Keep pulling that leg flush back. And then come up to center. Breath in. We trade. Again, keep pulling the flush back. Keep opening the knees up. Some of you, this will be more back, more shoulder. Others, it's like me, is all sorts of my inner, all around that hip. A couple of breaths. Now come to center, squeeze your butt, Woo, and straighten your legs, and just kind of feel what you just did there. I feel a whole bunch of stuff. Rotate toes forward, big inhale up, squeeze your glutes, squeeze your quads, bend your knees. I'm going to come into just a wide forward fold for a couple of breaths. Take any movement you want, just a little bit of upside down time, as weird as it is, it's hugely effective in clearing out the brain. Let the head hang. And then slowly we walk ourselves back to the front of the mat. Right foot still back. Left foot is forward. Take a breath in. Step the right foot to meet the left. And forward fold, knees bent. Fingers to shins. Squeeze the butt. Halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Squeeze the butt. Inhale, come up. Just clear it out. And then exhale, bring those hands to prayer. See if you can kind of pick up on the heat that you, that you built. If you can't, don't sweat it. Let's work the other side. Inhale, hands up. Exhale, hands down. Step that left foot back. Coming into your runner's lunge on a different side. Don't be in a hurry. Let the side figure out the ride. Check your alignment, knee to ankle. Fall of the back foot, spine's long, life's good. Couple breaths. Life is good. I got toilet paper yesterday. So exciting. Couple breaths. My neighbor gave me a tip at 10.38. So I bought my toilet paper and I bought her a bottle of wine to thank her for the tip. Couple breaths. You know it's a crazy world when you're thanking someone for a toilet paper tip with a bottle of wine. It costs three times more than the uh, toilet paper. But that's her favorite. Breathe. Gratitude. 
elbow to knee. We move into that side angle. My back and butt will be facing you. Rotate that heel down. Now, here's what I don't want to see is the booty sticking way back. Up it in, squeeze your glute. Lift that left arm, come into your regular side angle first. I think I said half minute, I meant side angle. Back leg, plant the blade of the foot, check this elbow. If your knee is really in because that leg's tight, track it away and then reach up, squeeze your glutes, shift forward, and then reach again like you really mean it through these left fingers, really push into those left blade of the foot. All the years back, I was just chicken necking it out. And then slowly lower that hand down. Let's track into this inner thigh a little bit more. Walk to the left, bend the left knee, reach those right toes up, and then kind of pull the shoulder back. So we want to make it active. Pull this leg in, so it's like you're pulling the femur up. Find that space there first. Track this left knee away, and then hold. Make it a little bit less fabulous. Right hand will be right under the shoulder. Reach the left hand up. One more breath, and then lower the left hand down. We're going to walk back to the front of the mat, just because I don't want to stick my booty right into this. Take a breath in, step the left foot to meet the right, and fold. Halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, squeeze the glutes, come all the way up to stand. And then exhale, release those hands down. Tiny bit of balance work. Before we go more into the hips, we're going to do um, standing posture with tree. So tree, you know, it's like the yogic balance. Everybody thinks of tree. When you think, when you think of yoga, you think of tree posture. But tree is a hip opener. So we just open up kind of the hip flexor in this area. So try to tap into that. Ground down first into your right foot. Check your hip. We don't want to stick in the hyperextend. Squeeze in. Put your hand right on your butt dimple area and ignite that thing so that you know it's there. Plant your tree roots on that right foot. Lift your left knee up to start. This could be it today. Or we find that external rotation. Woo! Rotate the door out. Maybe your tree is here. I'm just going to put mine on my calf today just for giggles. You want to take it up high, cool. Your balance sucks today. Toes down, baby tree, sapling, no judgment. I've got a teenage tree going on today. And then rotate out. Again, don't let that hip come out. Now reach that hand, right hand up. Keep that left hand right where it is. Arch towards the knee. Squeeze your glute. Super active. Push down, lift up. Ooh, I'm falling. And then inhale, come up, and let that go. If you fell out, right, what do we do? We giggle, it's not a big deal. And then kind of wiggle that out. You might actually feel the work around the hip. We move into the other side, plant the tree roots on the left. I can ask a lot while I do balance and deep stretch. I do it for a lot of reasons. First, it's a combination of strength and flexibility, which is what we all need. It's not just about endless flexibility, but it's also a combination of Allowing the brain to stretch. Hold. Breathe. Come into your tree. Again, they can be foot way up, anywhere other than around the knee. Could be tree down. I got crazy, terrible balance today. Squeeze this left glute. Don't let it hyperextend. We see that a lot. Whoa. And then we take the left hand up. Try and remind this right hip to open. Maybe stay here and you're like me. <laughs> it's a really windy tree, just like outside. We don't judge. Or maybe try and arch over. I can't do anything with that today. Take a breath, wherever you are. I'm grounding my tree today. And then inhale up. 
and release that side. And just give yourself a little kind of party dance there. All right, and then slowly come back to the front of the mat if you turn yourself sideways. Big inhale up. Exhale, fingertips down to the ground. You're gonna step that right foot back, come into that runner's lunge again. I'm gonna take it at an angle for you guys here. Settle in, and then move the hand towards the inside of the foot. Let the hips relax. Now, there's nothing relaxing about this, hopefully, making an active lizard here. We want that right leg, I want you to really fire it up. Now, take the left toes, rotate them out. So if you watch this right hip on me, it kind of drops a tiny bit. Take your right hand, bring it center and forward, and then elbow into that knee. I'll give you a front view of this here. Now again, this is hard. Nothing easy about it. Couple breaths. You can stay here if you're like, oh my lord, what am I feeling? Or we're gonna come into a modified side plank. What happens is back foot, you come onto the blade and you look to the left and you take that elbow on the knee and you let your hip drop down a tiny bit. This is a big expression. If it's not working in you, you have that right knee down, you just rotate these left toes out. Now you can stay here, it's like level two. Or we go level three, reach the left hand up, gaze to the ceiling, and then reach that arm over your ear. So working to strengthen the core while we stretch to the left outer hip. Big inhale in. Big exhale out. And then slowly bring that hand down to the mat. Pivot yourself back into that nice active lizard. Couple of breaths in, couple of breaths out. And it's Friday, so we're going to get a little spunky. Try and keep your booty down nice and low. I'm going to step the right foot outside of the right hand. Coming into a loss in the squat. You have to come like way up, to come down, go for it. Take a breath, engage your belly. Oh, right foot forward. I'm a loss in the squat. That was a big ass. However, you got there is perfect. It doesn't need to be pretty. You're in your house and no one saw you get there, right? Couple of breaths. Malasana squat is not your place. You could do it against the wall. That's how most of my athletes, I have them do it until they can get comfortable here. You could sit on a block, whatever it is. Probably one of the best postures that we can do for our bodies right here in this Malasana squat. Big inhale in. Big exhale out. Now draw the belly in. Reach the hands forward. Plant those palms. Kind of shift into them and lift your hips up and move them in some circles. Both directions. And then start to heel toe your feet together. Bring those hands back towards your feet. Fingertips towards your shins, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Step the left foot back. I'm going to into this left side. We find our runner's lunge first. Staying it warmed up, so maybe this feels differently than when we were here a few moments ago. Hopefully it does have a little bit more space. And then wiggle the foot out, wiggle the hands in. We come into our active lizard. Now, try to pull that left hip forward a tiny bit. Try to make it good and active. This left quad is engaged. Black is good. Take a breath. Remember that head is an extension of the spine, so don't let it drop down. I'm not trying to lick anything. Keep it at the same angle if you can. A couple breaths. Now look at these right toes. Rotate them out. Right away, you'll feel the side, a difference. Left hand, we bring it center and forward. Maybe you look like this, elbow to knee. Maybe you take that back leg and drop onto the pinky blade, like into a side plank variation. This is a modified side plank. You can totally have your left knee down too and just be like, oh, this is perfect. Whatever you choose, commit to it. Don't judge it. Everybody has to start somewhere. And trust me, I did not start here. I've been practicing 22 years. A couple breaths. Maybe you stay here. Maybe you reach the hand up. Where you are, push into this right foot. Fire up that outer hip. Now reach the hand forward. I gotta walk mine. I'm too close to the wall. I'm backwards. Big inhale in. One more time. Big breath. 
reach up, reach around, come back, take a breath in, and then again, if you can, stay low with the booty, back away from the wall so I don't bang my head, although that would be good for comic relief. Left foot, steps, and we lower into our squat. Hold, take a breath in. Big, huge breath out. The last one squat is hips, hips, and more hips. Oh my Lord, take a breath. Lengthen spine, lean back as much as you can. Lean back until you feel like you're gonna fall back. Take a breath. And then actually fall back. Whew. Let the hands, I mean, let the legs come out in front. Now take your hands <clears throat> by your hips. And kind of pull your hips back and straighten your legs. Now we're going to stretch into the hamstrings again and into um, a little bit of outer space here. But I want you to actually, <coughs> excuse me, bend your knees and grab hold of the blades of your feet. So most of us, you, you know, you got to draw the belly in, scoop that stuff, lift the girls if you've got big ones. I do not, obviously. I don't have to worry about that. Grab only out of the blades of the feet. Now, inhale, lengthen the spine, and then as you exhale, pull away and tuck the chin. Just this right leg, straighten it as much as you can. Mine's not touching the floor. I can straighten it, but it's not touching the floor. Keep the belly drawn in. You might look like this. No judgment. Couple of breaths. And then bring that right foot in. Inhale, like a little tiny cow. And then exhale, little cat seated. Hold here, chin stays tucked. Hold on to that left outer leg. Everyone can get the outside of the feet because your, knee, your knees might be like this. That's totally cool. You could use a strap, but I'm not a fan of straps. And then straighten. I take it back. I am a fan of straps, but not right now. I don't want you to strain your shoulders, but if you need to use it, go for it. Hold and pull. Keep that belly drawn in. We want to protect and strengthen. Big breath in. And bring that foot right back again. Now, slowly, hands come behind. Plant your feet. This is a big ass. We're going to lift into reverse tabletop. You can do with your hands what you like. Fingertips forward or fingertips backwards. I'm going to turn my fingertips back. It's just because my forearms are tight. Because I was working with a wrench sockets for like three hours yesterday um working on it with a bunch of bolts so my forearms are tight stick the chest out engage your belly push into your feet lift your hips now head can go back or head cannot it can look forward big inhale squeeze your glutes lift up and then slowly come back down and come out of that perfect you're going to bring both heels by right hip. Now this is kind of a weird thing to think about. Right top of the foot, bring it into the arch of that left foot if you can, and then kind of rebalance yourself. So I'll show you what I look like from the front. It's like, this is natural to sit like this, but I want you to lift up and come out of that. So it's working into this area. Take your right hand at first, grab this shin, and then lift up and reach over. Now, depending on your range of motion, my elbow can actually find my feet and I can pull. Couple of breaths. And then inhale, come up. Take this top hand, you're gonna reach over for this shin now. This right hand, take it behind you. Inhale, lengthen, and then exhale, twist. Draw the belly in and up. Twist a little further. And then come back to center. This left leg, bottom leg's where I want it. Take hold of this top leg, bring it down, around, and on top, and I snuck that right on in. Go across the legs, wiggle and jiggle this in. And just kind of settle back down. Now, if you're like, girl, you cray right. You can sit on a block, under a butt. You can have one leg doing this only. You can have your left leg straight, right leg on top. Take a couple of breaths here. Big inhale. Shift it forward. I don't care what your head and shoulders are doing. I want your ribs to come forward. 
Again, this is for you. Big inhale in. Ribs forward. Working back into some side body love. Fingertips come down. Keep that long spine. Literally, you might be up here going, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. That's cool. Wherever you are, it's cool. This used to be like my least favorite thing besides pigeon. I would genuinely curse my teacher. Now I'm like, oh, go more gas now. So it takes time. So don't judge, don't be hard on yourself. And then we lift up. Plant the left hand, push into it. You'll shift your right hip, reach up and over. Pull the ears to shoulders, look up, take breath. And then really reach to the front left, take a breath. Plant those fingertips way away. Push the hips back. Find some big time length down that right side of the back. Your QL, big inhale in. And then if you can, you might not be able to get this low. We walk over to come around to the other side. You might just like sit up. Come on. Right hand plants, push in, really reach. Big inhale up and over. And then lower, reach to the front right. Take a breath. You won't get as much out of this side because it's our upper, I mean, it's our lower hip. And then slowly lower the hands. Come up and come out of that. Bring those feet out in front. And windshield wipe room side to side. Now we're going to trade. We're going to do that little funky twist on this other side. So next time you drop those feet to the right, kind of pull them in towards your booty. Remember, this is, this is a weird little tiny thing. You want to get the our top boniest part of this left foot in the arch. And you put a little bit of a squish into the arch of the bottom foot. This is actually an exercise I have not done in a long time. And it's a um, super great place to be. Now, take a breath in. Left fingers, grab the shin wherever you can. Right hand up and over. So lots of side body mobility today as we're working with these hips. Take a breath in. We did tons of hamstrings on Wednesday. So let's try and hit a little bit, you know, not a little bit, a lot of different areas. Begin hammering. You'll notice I'm not even trying to be anywhere sparky today after that epic fail with the freeze on Wednesday. Hand comes to shin. Inhale, lengthen, left hand back. This is a big ass on the twist. Twist. You gotta really engage that belly. Left shoulder, just think about top, pull back, head, excuse me, head back, big inhale in. And slowly come back to center. This top leg, your left leg, grab that thing and pull it up and over. Again, I make it look easy. It's not. Get into going Mokasana however you can. It's the human pretzel with the legs, right? So you got the left leg on top of the right, unless for some reason you were, you know, doing the other side. I have several clients that are dyslexic, I swear, and hearing too. So we always giggle. They do the opposite of the side that I might say. And then many times I probably say the wrong side. So we're here visit, get to know it, what's going on, big stretch to the outer hip, glute med, IT band, TFL, lots of stuff. Again, it's not about anything in the head and the shoulders. Keep your long spine, that might mean you need to be back here, but wherever you are, slow the breath, big inhale, and your ribs are coming forward and down. Now, I know there's someone on here that has had a hip replacement, so I know she knows her practice, you do what you need. Remember the head is an extension of the spine. Make sure you're not chucking the chin. Really, it's on, we need to pull our ears to where we feel like we're making a double chin as much as that sucks. So what are we get? Take a breath in. Now stay low. Ooh, walk over to the left. Plant the left hand, push it in. Reach those right fingers up and over. Open up the heart space. Find that space all in the right side of the body. Big inhale, reach, and then exhale, lower that right hand again, as far away as you can get it. Keep pushing into those fingers, keep pushing your hips back, but reach away, big inhale. And then we take it to the other side. Right hand down, Ooh, roll that left shoulder open, push that hand down, really reach. Just look at the juicier one, take a breath. 
reach, and then trade. Reach to the front right corner as far as you can. Now plant the fingers away, make it active. Push the hips back, belly is drawn in, let the head hang. One more breath. Walk those hands back up. Bring them back into the midline. Lift yourself up. Bring those feet out in front. Anytime in yoga that we're doing a deep stretch, our space comes from the exhale. In our inhale, we kind of lighten up, lengthen the spine. And in our exhale, we get tiny and we go as far into it as we can at that moment. That is what works for us. And the way we do that is by drawing the belly in and up. So I welcome you to play with that with your breath. Just to kind of, again, on your inhale, you lengthen your spine, kind of come out of it. And on your exhale, really squeeze the belly in and up. Now draw those knees down into the chest. Give yourself a little bit of obsession. We're going to take those feet down, come back into that bound angle. So feet together, knees wide. Enjoy this space, a little back bend. We started here. How does it feel differently? Don't judge, just acknowledge. And then a little half happy baby. Just like before, left hand we flip up, we put it on that leg, tell that left leg stay right there. Right side, grab hold, might be hand behind the calf. If you're like not a happy baby or a grumpy baby, that's okay. You turn and you grab around your calf like this. If you have the space, you take hand to the outer side of the foot, and pull down and up. Couple breaths. And if you're feeling like you want to explore, feel free. Peace fingers to that big toe. Let that right leg do whatever the heck it wants. Big inhale up. Push that left leg down with that back of the palm. One more breath. Wherever you are. And then bring that right sole of the foot to meet the left. Both palms are up. Big inhale in. And as you exhale, transition to the half happy baby with the left side. Again, you grumpy baby, no judgment. Hand comes inside, you grab around that calf. Ask that right leg to open up a little more, working into the hips and the hip flexor. Inner thigh. I like half happy baby bit better than full happy baby because my back is nice and flat. I can really get the most out of my hip stretch on this side. But if it doesn't work in your body, by all means, do what makes you happy. Maybe moving into peace fingers to big toe, stretching the leg out, whatever you need. And then slowly, we bring that left leg back. Bring it in to meet the left, hands come overhead, big inhale in. And as you exhale, draw those knees together, pull them up into the chest, give them a little squeeze. And then I invite you to just extend them up. So yours might be bent. You want the low back flat. You might be familiar with this posture. You can have legs up or you have your block nearby, you can take waterfall with that block underneath your sacrum and your hips up. This feels really good um, when you get used to it, but it's um, pretty advanced. Or if you're, in, you're at home, even at the studio we do this, you can scoot your booty right towards the wall, put those legs up the wall. Tremendous way to relax. If you're a big runner, it's a great thing to do to just get those uh, fluids relaxed on those acids released out of those feet, calves, and legs, and help that nervous system really chill out. Take a breath in. Take a breath out. And then slowly, if you have your legs up, bring them down onto the mat. Stretch them out long onto the mat. Find the opposite corners of the mat, flipping those palms up. I welcome you to keep those eyes closed here and take a few moments of stillness, allowing yourself 
to set. Allow that cement to set itself up. Let your breath be relaxed. Check and release the tongue from the root in the roof of your mouth. Knowing that wherever you are is perfectly wonderful and safe and relaxed. If your brain is wandering from the space, bring it back. Scan your senses and just notice. I welcome you to stay here as long as you like. The benefit of a home practice is you don't have to do and come out. When we pull you out of rest, with these more condensed deep stretch classes. I like to spend more time on movement. So if you need more time right here in stillness, feel free to stay right there. For the rest of you, I welcome you to gently begin to make your way into a little bit of movement with your fingers and your toes. Gentle nod of the head. Just reconnecting. And then maybe slowly rolling over onto your right side and visiting that side body, very familiar space, you know what we call it, our fetal position, which represents the beginning. So it's now the beginning of your gorgeous Friday. And yes, it is Friday. Bring your palms down by your shoulders if you're there. And then I welcome you to make your way up into a comfortable seat facing your screen as we send our efforts in towards one another and our mutual love and respect for our continued journey. Bringing those hands to prayer at heart center, connecting thumb to our heart space, our middle chakra. I welcome you to take a big deep inhale in. Feel your spine lengthen, your heart opens. And as you exhale, a reminder of how much we soften. I welcome you to bring thumb knuckles to your forehead. We're together, we honor that clarity of thought. Coming back to your intention, spend a moment to recognize it. Moving thumb knuckles to lips, we honor that clarity of speech and our efforts to stay positive and compassionate with our words. And then lastly, beautiful yogis, we bring those thumb knuckles back to our heart space where we honor that clarity of action. And then again, that willingness to slow down and work to continue to build those relationships within the walls that we are living right now and make them the very truest, most passionate, most loving that we can. I thank you all so much from the bottom of my heart for trusting your practice with me today. And I hope that you have a wonderful weekend ahead. Namaste. Namaste. May you leave feeling more relaxed than when we met. I will type in the chat a little note about a donation if you are so inclined. And again, I welcome you to stay relaxed and on your back as long as you would like because it is a gorgeous space to be especially if you were able to tap into that really relaxed location. Big inhale in. Beautiful yogis, again, it's been my honor to guide you through your practice. I look forward to seeing you back next week. I'm sticking with the Wednesday and the Friday schedule, 10 a.m. for this deep stretch. If you miss it, feel free. You can catch it on Melting Point Hot Yoga's YouTube channel at any time. So we thank you guys so much from the bottom of our heart for supporting us as we are all unable to earn our normal incomes in this industry. And we thank you again for all of your support. Have an awesome weekend. Namaste. Thanks, Lindsay. Thank you. Have a fabulous day.